Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to Podcast 14.2. Second to last one ever. Woohoo! We have a few little objectives to get through here. Balance predict products involving alpha. Hey, I learned what those were. Beta, those two. Gamma, positron reactions. So these are nuclear reactions. Differentiate between fusion and fission. Explain chain reactions. And calculate half life and the time to reach certain amounts. So let's go ahead and get started. So alpha decay. So alpha decay, remember alpha looks like this, um, 4 over 2. Remember, it's plus 2. Um, it could also be 4 over 2 He, both of them. And oops. All right, so now that we know what the alpha particles are, we're going to try and figure out what this guy right here is. So the way you do these decay problems is you look at the top number. So this top number is 256, and everything on the left side on the top has to equal everything on the right side on the top. So over here, this element is going to have this helium, or the alpha particle, weighs 4. So 4 plus something is going to be the number up here. So that would be 252. So 252 plus 4 equals 256. That's how we get the mass. The masses must add up to be the same thing. On this side, the left side is 103. The right-hand side is 2 plus something, right? So that must be 101. So now I'm going to look up what 101 is on my handy-dandy periodic table, which you better get yours out. Go ahead and go get it now. 101 is in the F block all the way in the bottom, and it is MD, Mendelevium. Okay. So then that's one way you could do an alpha decay problem. The other one is you do an alpha decay problem with homium, which is 4 over 2 He is my alpha particle. So the left-hand side is 151. The right-hand side is 4 plus something. That would be 147. The left-hand side is 67 protons. The right-hand side is 2. So 65 plus 2 is 67. Handy-dandy periodic table, 65 is hard to find. 65 is TB, terbium. Not that you need to know it's terbium, but you need to know that. Alpha decay of Neptunium 175. So what I'm going to do for this one is I know it's NP. And I know this number right here means its mass is 175. So I'm going to look for neptunium. Neptunium, which is number 93. And if it's going to undergo alpha decay, again, it's going to be 4 over 2 He. Plus, if that's 175, if the top number is 175, that means this is going to be 171. 171 plus, one, plus 4 is 175. This is 93, so this is 2 plus something is 93, which is 91. And 91 is protactinium, which is pa. There you go. And a picture of big guy, medium guy, alpha particle. Beta. Um, same deal. Well, let's scribble this out, I guess. Eh, but you can see it that way. Um, beta decay, remember, is a beta particle, which is 0, negative 1. Whoops, that's a 0. Or 0, negative 1, E. Both are OK. Um, notice if this doesn't have any mass, that means the mass will be the same. So that's 247. Americium, I don't know why this one's got a Z on it. That's what I get for stealing it from uh, the internet. A-M. A-M, which I wish I knew where it was. A-M. A M is number 95. Sorry, that took me so long. That should have said 95. But it doesn't matter because I can look up A M, and that bottom number is uh, 95. The whole number is 95. So if this is negative 1, something minus 1 equals 95, and that would be 96, which would be curium. Let's see. Yeah. All right, gold. I've got a beta particle, 0, negative 1, beta. Plus, now notice, if it's beta particle, that's why this is a beta decay. So this is going to be the same mass, 211. And negative 1 with something will equal 79. That something will be 80. Now, this is the saddest reaction because what happens is you turn gold into mercury. Oh, man, I wanted gold and it turned into mercury. So make sure your gold's not radioactive or you'll be sad. Beta decay of boron 13. Boron is B. 13 is the mass. And boron is number 5. Beta decay, sorry, my fives aren't looking very five-ish. Um, beta decay, again, is 0, negative 1, E. Plus the mass of the thing is still 13, which all that looks like a B, so I'll try it again. 
13. And the bottom number, something minus 1, my something over here, question mark, minus 1 equals 5, that's 6. And something with 6 is carbon. Gamma is often with others. Radon 230 undergoes beta and gamma decay. Radon is number, my periodic table, 86, so I have Rn. This 230 is the top number, 230. 86, and if it undergoes beta and gamma decay, beta is 0, negative 1e, e. doesn't matter what order it is, and plus, and gamma is that funny looking thing, 0, 0. So, and then something else. So notice, the top one weighs nothing, right, nothing, nothing. So my mass is still going to be 230. Now, this bottom part, gamma is just energy, so it doesn't do anything. So something, my something over here, minus 1, it's going to be 86. That's 87. Okay, so I have 87, and I'm on the hunt for 87, which is francium. There you go. And then erbium 171. Er, what's erbium? Er, er, 171, and erbium is number 68 from that periodic table. Undergoes gamma decay. So if it's decay, it goes on the other opposite side. So 0, 0, gamma plus 171 over 68, that's still erbium. That seems weird. It's like nothing happened. Well, yeah, that's true, but I look at this as, you know, after Thanksgiving dinner, you don't feel so good because you ate too much. And then all of a sudden, the solution for that is belch. And you go, ah, and feel a lot better. All you did was release energy. Ah and you're much better. And that's all gamma is, is a, a belch of energy, which makes you feel better. Positron emission. Positron, it looks like a beta, but it's 0 plus 1, or 0 plus 1e. E. Positron emission by arsenic 72. Arsenic is AS, and the 72 means its mass is 72, and the number of protons for my periodic table is 33. And if it does positron emission, it's 0 plus 1e. E. And then plus something. Notice my mass is, will still be the same, 72. And then this is going to be plus 1, so 1 plus something will equal 33. And that would be 32, which is germanium. To go all kinds of crazy on you, it's like, what started out that does positron decay and gives you phosphorus? Well, I do the same thing, but backwards. 31. 15 plus 1 is 16. Ooh. Look for 16, and it's sulfur. All done. All right. Those are our main particles, and we're all done with that. Yay, 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 yay. Now we have fusion and fission. Fission is not fishing, although I wish it was. Um, fusion, and their definitions are basically pretty simple. Fusion is stick. Fission is split. And they both involve... Um, nuclei, uh, not nuclei, neutrons, that's it. Fusion, two smaller particles, sorry for the grammar, collide and make a larger particle. Some neutrons and energy. So they make three things. A larger particle, ba-bam, sticks together. Some neutrons, bing, 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 and energy. Ah, ouch. Usually heat. That's why the sun keeps us warm. Energy. Ah, warm. Fission, a neutron, a little baby neutron, hits a nucleus and makes smaller particles, Neutrons and energy. So here's my fission one, right? Neutron trucking at it. Ba-bam! Makes smaller particles, right? Extra neutrons, and then energy is released. Both of those things release energy, which, I don't know, keeps us warm or something. Where are fission and fusion used? Question mark. Fusion is hard to start since two positive nuclei repel each other, right? Nuclei are positive. So if this is positive and this is positive, both of these things repel each other. I hate positives. Remember, positives and negatives attract. Fission is easier to start because neutrons have no repulsion. There are people you know in your life that have no repulsion. Right? Okay, I would say like, mm, what's something that has absolutely no repulsions? Um, the Milwaukee Brewers. Nobody really likes the Brewers. Nobody really dislikes the Brewers. They're just kind of there. Okay? Or maybe I should have went since it's basketball season, like Oklahoma City, whatever they are. Okay? So this one, you can accelerate towards it, and since there's no repulsion, you can still smack into it and split apart. So where is fission used? Fission, which is easier to start. Nuclear power, hey, I like that. And bombs, well, I'm kind of okay with those. Um, fusion is in the sun because it's such high energy. 
And you can do a fission, which then starts a fusion bomb, but really we just do fission bombs for the most part. So in nuclear reactions, we want to be able to control them a little bit, and chain reactions are where this continues to perpetuate. So you get this neutron smashes into nucleus, and you get energy. Yay, energy. And you also get two more neutrons, which then can smack into two other ones. Yay, more energy. Yay, more energy. Yay, more energy. Yay, more, yay, more, yay. Wait a minute, maybe I'm getting too much energy. Meltdown. Ah, oh, look out. So what you do is in a nuclear reactor, and this, by the way, is a chain reaction, and it's supposed to do this. But what you do in a nuclear reaction is you stick in what's called a control rod, which is a big neutron absorber. And if you absorb the neutrons, you slow down the reaction, which is wonderful. Half-life. Okay, first of all, this little graph right here is my start of half-life. Nuclear decay does not decay like the possum on the road. Nuclear decay decays by half-lives. So after a certain amount of time, you will have half the product you would normally. Most things in our life decay or react linearly. So my grade went like this, and then it was spring, and my grade went like this, and then I realized I need this credit, and my grade went like this. Okay. So they tend to be linear and not all curvy like this one. Okay. So what you're going to do, half-lives is nice because we can divide and multiply by 2, which is something we like to do. The half-life for zirconium 84 is 26 minutes. If I start with a 175-gram sample, how much will be left over in 104 minutes? Well, here's what we do. Get out our calculators, first of all, and make our pens a little smaller. And you know what? To make it even more fun, I'll change my color. Ah, calculator, calculator. People are always taking my calculator. Uh, hope it has batteries. It does. All right, so 175, we're going to divide it by 2. 175 divided by 2. In one half-life, it would go to half of that, which would be 87.5. Then that would take right, 26 minutes. Then I'm trying to get to 104 minutes. Then I'm going to have another half-life divided by 2. So 87 divided by 2 is 43.75. And that would get me to another 26 minutes, which would be 52 minutes. Then 43.75 divided by 2. Sorry, this was supposed to be a 5. I don't know what happened to me. Um, that's 21.88. And that would be another 26 minutes, which would be 78 minutes. And then I'm not at 104 yet, so I'm going to do it again. 21.875 divided by 2 is 10.94. And that would take mm, 104 minutes. And the numbers will work out nicely for us. Um, so my answer is 10.94 grams. Oops, I almost circled that. Okay. The half-life of barium-131 is 12 days. How many grams remain after 72 days when the initial amount was 20? Okay, so 20. First half-life would get me to 10, and that would take 72. And then the next one would get me to 5, and that would be 144. No, oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? Oh, man. Changed to red of my awfulness. The half-life is 12 days. This took 12. And then that means this one would take 24. And now I'm back to blue. Happiness. And then half of 5 is 2.5. And another 12 days would give me 36 days. And then half of 2.5 is 1.25. And that would take another 12 days, which is 48. And then half of 1.25, I'm going to go to my calculator now. Ah, 1.25 divided by 2.625. And that would give me 60 days. And then 72 days. Okay, so divide 0.625 by 2 again. And that's 0.3125. And that gives me 72 days. Woohoo! So how many grams? 0.3125 grams. Calculate the half-life. 100 grams carbon, 14 decays until only 25 grams carbon are left. After 11,460 years. Wow, that's a long time of waiting. What is the half-life of carbon-14? So until 25, 100 grams goes to 25. So 100, and this one will go to 50. We go to 25. Okay, so I had one, two half-lives. So if it took me two half-lives, if two half-lives are 11, 40, or 60 years, right? So that means all I do is I take 11,460, that's my time, divided by the number of half-lives. So time divided by half-lives. 
By the way, I do know there's a video game named Half-Life, which Charlie's been just dying to tell me. 11, 460 divided by 2 is 5730. And that's years. By the way, that's a long time. But that's all right. 50 grams radioactive element X turned to 313 in 70, 75 days. So, 50, what's the Half-Life? 25, 12.5. By the way, I'm just dividing it by 2 every time. 6.125. Woo. 3.13. Hey, hey. So that means it took 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can count the arrows. Sometimes that helps people. So 75 over 4. His calculator worked for me. 75 divided by 4 is 18.75. That's not right. Oh, 18.75 days. So it's okay to do that simple thing in that route. So. And now we are at the wonderful world of the review time. Tops bounce tops. Remember, stuff on the top, Z on the bottom. And the left is X and Z once you're all through there. Bottoms bounce the bottoms. Fusion splits, fusion sticks. I'm oh, sorry, fusion splits, fusion sticks. And keep cutting in half. And we're all done. Sorry about the 16 minutes, 6 seconds, but it's work. Toodle.